The late 50s were a time of rebellion for the youth of America. Rock and roll and going out with friends was all the rage, and breaking the traditions of American culture seemed to be the norm. Yet it wasn't until the 1960s that men and women finally could express themselves through their clothes. In 1960, older men and women, typically parents and grandparents, continued to wear traditional clothing, including fur collars, shawls, and hats, dresses below the knee in dull, light colors, in black or brown heels no more than an inch thick. The men then would wear bowler hats, suit jackets, and narrow trousers with leather pointed toe shoes. However, in 1961, oval shaped shoulders and tapered hemlines were now being replaced by straight wide shoulders with an inward curve at the midriff and a flare at the hem. Skirts rose to the middle of the kneecap and shoes were being produced from calf, alligator, and satin. Heels now rose to over an inch or square toed and since women loved them so much, they were put underneath ball gowns. By 1962, outfits became sleek and slender, softly belted with a muffled neckline. The natural outline became popular, which was a simple form-fitting line down the torso. In mid-1962, Mary Quant entered the fashion world with much enthusiasm. As a UK designer, she came into the American market with the conclusion of a licensing agreement with JCPenney for clothing and underwear. She had a new style no one had really seen before. She wore her skirts inches above the knee when everyone else wore theirs below. Every young teenage girl wanted to wear this new trend. That's why, by 1963, skirts rose to right above the knee, dresses became sleeveless, and heels lowered half an inch. Tweed, mohair, leather, and fur was seen on almost every woman, and boots ranged from the ankle to the top of the thigh. Suits became fur trimmed with lynx, kit fox, and leopard. A term created by the women of the 1960s was the sportive look, consisting of vests, kerchiefs, textured cotton stockings, turtlenecks, and paisley ascot scarves. Men began wearing pleatless pants, and stripes began to be seen on jackets, sweaters, shirts, and ties. The two-button suit became popular, and all businessmen wore soft Italian shoes. By the end of 1963, Mary Quant establishes the Ginger Group, launching a global-wide production of her clothing line. 1964 was the year that shocked America. Women began to take fashion to a new level. Andre Coyage created a short mini dress with matching jacket and bright orange because women wanted the shorter look. However, women took their feminism to a new level. Rudy Gernreich created the topless bathing suit. It created much controversy, and if women decided to wear the bathing suit in public, they would be arrested for public nudity. Showing skin seemed to be increasingly more widespread because dresses now had plunging necklines and flesh-colored sheer netting. Dresses also now had knee-high skirts, fitted bodices, ruffles, pleats, and lace. Pale lipstick and nail polish became used to contrast the bright colors of their clothes. Due to the straight line dresses are now being shaped, women would pay up to $40 for a chemically treated hair solution to take out their curls. Men's suits are now lighter and brighter, Suit coats and jackets are shorter with wider lapels and trousers became uncuffed. When 1965 came, women would wear dresses with stripes, checks, and wavy lines with geometric bands of contrasting colors. Shoes were rounded at the toes and would have only up to a medium-sized heel. The poor boy look gained popularity which consisted of low hipster pants and a short sweater. Roger Vivier, another new designer, created the futuristic shoe. One was created from white silk with a chunky heel covered in clear gemstones. Then, the other pair was created from black patent leather with a buckle. Other shoes include white, black, red, and blue fake leather geometric shapes that match the geometric dresses and clear and red plastic with heart-shaped heels and a vinyl strap. Along with dresses having new designs, White and black checkered board print was seen on many vinyl coats, and bold, bright abstract shapes could be found on silk hooded capes. Twiggy, a popular model of the 1960s, introduced the mod look initially. The mod look came into style in 1966. This look consisted of mini skirts, pale colored fishnet or lacy hosiery, Mary Jane shoes or tall boots, 
manly jackets and ties, and over-the-shoulder handbags with gaudy jewelry. Short fur dresses with high necklines seem more prominent with wealthy women. For older women, they would wear pink, yellow, white, or purple suits made from wool tweed with matching skirt and jacket with gold buttons and a quilted silk lining. Contrasting the look of older women, the younger generation would wear A-line mini dress with a wavy pattern of sequins or a dress with matching jacket with similar sequins in a striped pattern. Both looks would be for going out or going to an expensive party. By fall, women can now be seen in beige and black tweed mini dress with a high turtleneck, collar, and colored tights. Some even tried the trend of using labels as inspiration for an autumn look. Designers did not stop there. John Bates, an English designer, created a wedding coat that was double-breasted and white but had a metallic collar. Judy Brewer, another designer, began creating dresses from paper. Men changed their look as well. Pants began to be low-slung, wide-belted, skinny, and fitted. They would wear flashy ties with floral prints and wear boots, vests, London caps, and narrow carnaby jackets. Between 1967 and 1968, women began to be overly feminine and believed that they should not be restricted by society. They would wear hardware consisting of metal squares, nail heads, rattling chains, zippers, brass buttons, and clamps. Paco Rabanne created a mini dress made from aluminum plates and brass wire and a set of bare midriff top and hip hugger skirt made from aluminum discs linked by metal wire. Futuristic fashion continued with bright floral dresses and wide belts. Others wore bright fur shawls covered in the same floral print. However, the opposite to bright colors was women wearing head-to-toe black covering their bodies. Yet even more contrasting, the youth of America would wear little to nothing with open back dresses because they believed that society cannot tell them what to wear. Because of this mentality, feminists picketed the Miss America pageant in Atlantic City. They threw away symbols of women oppression, including bras, dish rags, makeup, feminine hygiene products, and high heels. They felt as if women should not be objects to just look at. Many feminists believed in unisex clothing and started wearing man-created jeans. Of course, there are always women who will stay completely traditional and will wear feathered cocktail dresses and flowing white wedding dresses. A new kind of shoe was developed using astroturf, clear vinyl, and a rubber sole. In 1969, metal became increasingly more common and mini dresses were made with chrome-plated plastic and steel discs linked by stainless steel rings, and pink and white plastic beads were linked by stainless steel rings to create a shirt. The hippie movement also came around in 1969 where men and women wore baggy clothing, tassels, bright colors, and long baggy pants. Women would wear long flowing skirts and dresses. Men would wear brightly colored pants, vests, and non-matching suits. The 60s were a time of change for America, letting men and women break out of their comfort zones and into truly expressing themselves.